Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world watching this. My name is Erla Dervishi. I am a senior at Loyola University Chicago, majoring in political science and art history. And this is the senior capstone for my art history major, and it's the thesis. This is a condensed version of the over 40 pages I wrote over the course of a year for my senior thesis. And I will be presenting my topic on socialist realism against contemporary visual culture in Albanian art. For anyone who is Albanian and is watching this, so let's go ahead and get into it. This discussion will examine how Albanian art has emerged to convey socialist realism to perpetuate in Verhoja's authoritarian rule and reinforce political propaganda. Today, in contemporary and diaspora work, Albanian artists reflect on that time period and how Albanian art has evolved past socialist realism storytelling. Many people are unfamiliar with the country of Albania. It is an independent country in the Balkans, sitting north of Greece and across the Adriatic Sea from Italy. Albania has been under various different forms of rule during its long history. Albanians were under Ottoman rule from the 14th century until the 20, early 20th century. And on November 28, 1912, Albania was one of the last to formally withdraw from the Ottomans and finally declare their independence. From 1912 until 1945, Albania attempted different forms of government and attempts at democracy until it led to the rise of socialism and rule of, of dictator Enver Hoxha. While well, under the rule of Enver Hoxha between the years of 1945 until his death in 1985, Albanian culture, philosophy, thought, and art were closely monitored to uphold authoritarian views of a socialist Albania. Art under this time is labeled under the category of socialist realism. Socialist realism did not depict life as it was for Albanians, but rather the idealized version of how life would have, should have been under the dictatorship of Hoxha. The period of socialist realism allowed the state to dominate each aspect of cultural life, particularly art and literature, and provided a structural framework for artists and creativity alike. One of the most prolific painters of socialist realism is Zef Shoshi. In this image, he depicts Hoxha happily carrying young Albanian children, future partisans, and leveling his image to be that of family, community, and patriarchy. The phenomenon of the individual cult can be seen in Enver Hoxha's image and visual arts. The creativity of Shoshi in this painting is shown by his depiction to depict Hoxha as a heroic leader, a martyr to the politics and history of Albanian culture. In this image, he represents the new man, which is a high virtue of socialist realism and one of the leading themes of Albanian visual art. The new man was a strong ideology protected by law and this ideology permeated all veins of Albanian society. And here we see it in Shosh's painting. The new man created by the system would have benefited from the ideological teachings of the party. It accepted the party as his parent figure and prepared himself to serve it and provide information for it reinforcing long-standing ideals of Albanian patriarchy and masculinity in the process. Another painting emblematic of the ideals of socialist realism by Shoshi is entitled Going to Work. In Going to Work, Shoshi depicts the end of a work day at a local factory. A couple finishes their job by laboring against the land with a shovel and a hoe. Together, they represent the people working for the socialist motherland toiling for its welfare and feeling joy, power, and love for doing so. The ideal partisan in Inver Hoxha's idealist Albania. Such themes have extreme symbolic value for socialist realism and were among the directives of the Workers' Party, constituting one of the strongest attempts at agricultural reform. This painting unequivocally, energetically, and passionately expressed the desire of the people to build socialism and to protect their independence against any external attack. This might have not necessarily represented the consensus of actual Albanian people laboring, but it represented the ideas of partisan Albania upheld by the dictator. Henceforth, Zef Shoshi remained a popular artist for the government of Albania during this time. In what appears to be a similar painting on the surface has a very different message. 
1972, artist Eddie Hila painted a large painting entitled Planting of Trees as a commission for the Albanian National Assembly that would prove to be decisive for both his later life and artistic career. The painting, which is dominated by vibrant greens and blues, represented a popular so socialist motif of a group of young men and women planting new trees in an orchard. However, the work was denounced by the Albanian National Assembly in 1973, a year after its commission, as degenerate art influenced by Western ideology. Hila claims that the accusation took him by surprise. However, if we compare the work to other pieces from the Albanian socialist realist, and realist canon, we can better comprehend why it was deemed inappropriate by the party officials. While Shoshi, in going to work, chose to represent workers frontally and statically to underline the importance of their historical role, Hila instead portrays the act of planting trees as an aesthetic dance, of a joie de vivre, and rather than a physical, rather than a time of physical effort and labor. Indeed, the painting bears some resemblance to the Italian Renaissance painting the artist was getting acquainted with at the time. In a surprising historical twist, the Albanian revolutionary youth working in the orchard echoes the figures of nymphs and angels from Italian Renaissance painter Filippino Lippi's wall frescoes, which is why it was denounced by the Albanian National Assembly. In the wake of the artistic and political scandal that surrounded the painting, Hila was convicted to a three-year-long re-education period on a poultry farm. He was relatively lucky since other intellectuals were sentenced to death for similar uh, situations. This verdict was a turning point for Hila, who had to leave the capital of Tirana, Albania, and move with his family to a mostly agricultural and even more isolated area in the south of the country. Eddie Hila, however, has continued to create artwork and has reflected upon the experience of Albanian trauma and identity. In his 2005 painting, Under the Hot Sun, we see a beach with an old cargo vessel moored in the background. Among the dunes, there are several bomb shelters, a reminder that during Hoja's regime in Albania, more than 200 concrete bunkers were constructed. However, Hila's main focus is not on these historical elements, but rather on the people sitting underneath umbrellas or walking beside the sea. This piece demonstrates that the painter's primary concern is not history as such, but rather how people inhabit historical circumstances by making even the harshest conditions their own. In this sense, Hila's artistic practice signals a deep belief in people's tenacity and resilience, even when confronted with decades of political oppression, poverty, and violence. This painting is evidence that Albanian culture and identity remains resilient in the face of adversity. Speaking of adversity, this is a common theme for the average Albanian. The next artist of focus is Petrit Halilai. Petrit Halilai was 13 and a refugee from the brutal war in Kosovo when Serbian forces burned down his house and captured his father. His family fled from place to place until they ended up as refugees in a camp in Kukus, Albania. A group of Italian psychologists arrived at his camp and gave him some felt tip pins, pen, pens in an attempt to process the recent traumatic events through a version of art therapy. Hadlida was soon drawing dozens of bright, childish pictures. In this picture, we see the ideal version of a familial home, unobstructed by violence, amidst nature, and featuring a bright peacock perched on a little tree branch. It shows a vision of happy and a faraway reality that a child dreams of when he's torn away from the only home he knows and understands. Halilai continues to make art and has become a very popular contemporary artist in Europe. He is also an openly gay man, which is an identity that thus far has seldom received any representation in Albanian art and culture. His modern artwork continues to unpack the trauma tied to ethnicity and the persistence of Albanian culture and identity. But it also represents the freedom found in living his true life far from the oppressive patriarchal masculine norm that Albanian livelihood is so often framed by. 23 years after his time at Kukus, Elida continues to use the original 38 drawings he created as a child and has transformed them into large scale paintings in an immersive space. On entering the display entitled Very Volcanic Over the Green Feather, you are met with interwoven landscapes, birds, trees, fires, but also de devastation juxtaposed with serenity. Hovering and suspended in midair, 83 felt tip drawings are displayed in fragments, providing the 
the viewer with a wholly immersive experience. The entire exhibition is a meditation on what it means to be a child who has escaped war. At first, it's a room full of bright colors in homage to Halilai's childlike innocence at the time of drawing. You may think you've entered a fairy tale of some sort, but as you make your way through the room, you realize there is darkness awaiting. The hanging fragments indicate a static pause as the pieces are unmoving. It is indicative of how the memories still reside in the Kosovar Albanians' collective memory. Together, the images speak to an intertwined nature of personal and national identity and collective trauma. The last artist discussed in this presentation is Lumturie Kresnici. Lumturie Kresnici is a female Albanian visual artist that uses a range of media to reflect on themes relating to intimacy, spirituality, and gendered subject formations. Her artwork uses a variety of color palettes, textures, and symbols related to Albanian culture and identity to tell a story of two realities divided among a singular painting. This metaphoric display of art is analogous to the two-faced reality living as an Albanian woman. To love your culture for the identity it has given you, but also resent the power structure it imposes upon. To matriculate a similar feeling, I'm going to read the following poem. Via Politica by Julieta de Shanko. I grew up in a big house where weakness and expressions of joy deserve punishment. And I was raised on the Via Politica with the grease of yesterday's glories, a thick grease collected under Arctic skies. I was lit up, my notebooks, my hair, my heart reeked of smoke. That's when we saw each other clearly, or rather what remained of us. Damage like lottery numbers, scratched away with the blade. How different we were. Those with round faces were righteous. Those with narrow faces were cautious. One listened secretly to Puccini, another to silence, the music's music. The oldest one declaimed monologues inside a 10 by 10 foot cell he had built for himself. And the mysterious ones simply had diabetes. But how similar we were in severe circumstances. Alarmed like a flock of magpies that the smallest stone sends into the sky towards the mouth of the abyss. Then it became obvious there wasn't enough space for everyone we separated. Some went on living in via verbum, telling of what they knew, what they witnessed, and so through their narrative creating their own Greece. The others crossed over the ocean. And those in particular who went farthest away never speak of their annoying history of wretched survival, burying it in the darkest crevices of the, on their being. Unfortunately, as with perfume, its scent lingers there for much, much longer. This poem wholly encapsulates the loneliness and liminality of diaspora as it pertains to nationality. Via Politica conveys the aftermath of life within totalitarianism and how frightening the transformation of a nation really is. The Shanku lives partly between Albania and America, and where in the US she is immersed in a long tradition of individualism, but yet her voice as a poet is rooted in Albania's sense of impermanence. Her poetry represents a new voice in Albanian poetic models and resembles the reclamation found in Halilai's and Kresnici's work. Together, the collective works discussed in this presentation paint the complicated cultural index of Albanian trauma, culture, identity, and experience. They inform us of the political past that shapes its growing future. The beauty of the Albanian legacy lives on from the Illyrians to the Ottomans to now. But in this modern day and age of Albanian culture and art making, the diaspora comes to include a multitude of identities and goes beyond the cisgendered, heteronormative, and male experience that has solely been represented thus far. Hence, this is why the study of Albanian art and culture is so crucial, not only for representation, but for livelihood. I'd like to dedicate the work of my thesis to my family. My love of my culture runs deep, and I hope I've made you all proud in the process. This work was, in conduct, was conducted in loving memory and appreciation of my great, great, great grandfather, 
shift chip that you depicted in the top right of this um, particular section, who signed the Albanian Declaration of Independence and dedicated his life to Albanian livelihood and freedom. I'd like to conclude this discussion with the popular Albanian saying, Satarosh Dotunasosh. We learn as long as we live. Thank you.